And here we are at CHCD TV, Canada's Huggable Car Dealer TV in Frederick, New Brunswick. The most huggable place on earth. And today I'm very fortunate to have Vista speaker and tech speaker all the way from New Mexico, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Agnes Mura. Correct? Correct. Agnes, you are one of the tech speakers and you've been speaking on the tech circuit for... 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. And you moved to New Mexico because you want to get some fresh air away from LA. Correct. So you was an LA girl. Agnes is, um, actually I just had a very fortunate to listen to Agnes's speech and it's the leader as a coach. And I took away a very, very powerful statement and I actually wrote it down and I listened to what is being said. Listen to what is not being said. So Agnes, could you take a few minutes and uh, share with us about your tech speak, you know, what you speak about at your vicious meetings and uh, give us a quick elevator speech? Yes, absolutely. So I'm uh, a leadership coach and uh, I'm a big believer in the fact that the worst conversations are the ones that we don't have, right? So we put people in positions of management, we put people in positions of leadership, and we don't often equip them with conversation modes and techniques and tools that allow them to have the difficult conversations. Because frankly, that's what organizations are. They're basically systems of conversation, if you think about it. Take the conversation away, we don't have an organization, and nothing happens, right? So uh, I've uh, figured that one of the key leadership tools that we can give each other is to learn how to do, how to have coaching conversations. For example, uh, you know, we hire wonderfully talented people, and then we expect them, and we're right in doing that, to grow on the job. But what the research shows is that if you combine their on-the-job learning experience with feedback and coaching from a, a sensitive and an intelligent and supportive human being, the learning just explodes. So, you know, you want to grow your people, you need to be sure that somebody in the organization, it may be, maybe not the boss, but somebody in the organization has to be a sounding board and accompany them with feedback and, and you know, a thought, uh, um, a thought uh, um, partnership so that they have uh, a bit of reflection in their life and they don't, don't just move through their day, days um, in an automatic sort of fashion. Because what we learn is that most of us don't learn just from experience. We learn by stopping, thinking about it, articulating it out loud, how do I know what I think till I hear myself speak kind of thing. So that's, that's one of the reasons we, we teach coaching to leaders. And when I mean leaders, uh, I mean uh, leadership distributed throughout the whole organization. It's not, an arch it's not a hierarchical concept of leadership because you can't afford nowadays to only have two or three leaders in a unit, right? You've got to, you need initiative and intelligence at all the levels. And so these coaching conversations build that ability in people to think more more broadly, more, you know, to open their horizons, to, to be more courageous. Um, and then the other thing is that coaching conversations are a wonderful way of uh, touching on those white elephant subjects, the things that most of us are avoidant about, because there's stuff that we just leave on the table. Nobody wants to touch it. And so the coaching approach, because it's based on uh, understanding the other person and asking sort of clever questions and digging in underneath the issue is a great way to bring things to the fore, uh, you know, when they're at the molehill level before they become mountains and all dramatic. So these, these normal, normal conversations are super, super useful. So today in the workshop that we did, right, we That's ended really up good. with um, coach early and coach often, right? so that things don't uh, 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 fester and, and accumulate. So that there's a coaching becomes like, the coaching conversation becomes like a currency of the realm. It happens between peers, it happens up, it happens down. It's, it's how we help each other grow. It's a sort of joint growth yeah. project. 
as, a, as an organization. That's very good. I was very impressed with one thing you said that two, two things can be right and be on both opposite sides because as a business leader, as a business owner, we have to follow a set of rules, whether they're implemented by governments or laws. But yet, and, and, and rules at our work, that guidelines that have to be followed, or we, you know, there's things have to be, it has to be done in certain ways. Yes. But on the other side, the next right thing is we have to allow our team to also think out of the box and generate some ideas on their own and perform be innovative. On their own, yeah. Be innovative. Yeah. So we have to follow guidelines and be innovative at the same time. That's, a, you know, that's quite a fine line. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, there's, a, there's an approach that uh, I think all leaders need to acknowledge, and that is that the 90-10 decisions, when it's black and white, so to speak, don't even get to us. They shouldn't get to us. Yeah. They should be taken by the technical people. The decisions that tend to come to our level are the ones that are 50-50 are the ones that are 49-51, are the ones that are between two rights, where you have to balance compliance with innovation, where you have to balance uh, cost and quality, uh, uh, centralization, decentralization, right? And these are things between which we can't choose. We've got to learn to dance between them and teach people how to go back and forth between both rights. Because they're not a right and a wrong, they're both right. And so at different times in our decision-making process, we have to see where have we gone overboard? Have we gone overboard on the side of compliance and everybody's saluting and not taking any initiative? Or have we gone, you know, do we have like a mischievous organization that everybody's pushing the envelope? Mm -hmm. And do we have to get more, you know, uh, systematic and disciplined? And so that's what true leadership is about most of the day, is to balance different departmental uh, priorities that we rightly set up to be sort of opposed so that there's a check and a balance between them and at different times we don't want personalities to carry the day we want the wisdom of this balancing act to carry the, ba the day is are we investing in marketing right now then marketing needs to understand that on in, a, in the next quarter uh, maybe we need to get more frugal because we're now giving you this opportunity. And, you know, the CFO is going to come and say next time, you know, we, get, we, we, we opted on your side of the investment last time. Now you've got to help us save some uh, money. So, so uh, navigating between people and, and making it about a negotiation versus a, uh, you know, I'm right and you're wrong. That's where leadership really comes in. It really is. It's like the yin and the yang. Totally. <laughs> well, Agnes, just before we're done, I'd like to give you another 30 seconds to tell us a quick about if people can get a hold of you or people can contact you about if to come speak at their place or a business. Yes, I mean, I do a them. lot of uh, I do a lot of workshops and I also do a lot of webinars. Uh, I do a lot of virtual oh, virtual webinars? works. Oh, absolutely. I work internationally in six languages, so if I didn't wow. work uh, virtually, I'd be, uh, I'd be uh, exhausted. So uh, um, our website is amicoaches.com. That's the name of the company, amicoaches.com, and people can reach out to us, and we can do telephone, we can do conference calls, we can do webinars, we can do, of course, also visits. Um, and. Uh, uh, we can do team building together. We can do basically any any approach that helps the the organization increase and and distribute leadership throughout its ranks, so that it's not dependent on one you know charismatic hero. And I can vouch for that. I just spent four hours with Agnes, with my tech group, and I could tell by the look of the faces of our guys. Like they was impressed. Like they, I could. They was wild. You, you <laughs> we really had a great brought. Time. You brought everybody. You brought everybody to another level of consciousness. Actually, even like there's some stuff that I know was made me think deeper than normal. If that makes any sense. Totally. About some stuff. That's so, the uh, idea. We want to thank you for coming to beautiful in Fredericton, Brunswick, Canada's huggable car dealer. We really enjoyed you, and uh, we're signing out here from CHCD TV. Thank you.